Hello and welcome to On Landscape. We're here with Colin Jarvis, who's joined us after a uh, bit of a stormy, squally trip to Sky. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, um, just dried out. And uh, with four, is it three clients you had? You were uh, three around? clients, yeah. yeah. I tend to book um, kind of four bed houses, so I am yeah. a little bit restricted to the number of clients I can take. Yeah. Uh, but I like uh, the kind of environment of living together for a few days in a house. Uh, some previous workshops I did use uh, bed and breakfasts. Yeah. But uh, you know, one time the guy said, "Right, you have got to be back at nine o'clock for your breakfast. breakfast if you're not back, work, it, you don't uh, get your breakfast." Yes, absolutely. So, so, uh, so where were you? Uh, we were near uh, Carbost. Yeah. Yeah. On the way to Talisca. Yeah. So really, really nice house. So that was uh, it. Was it was good? And tell me how the week was. The week was very wet, uh, so it was good that we had a nice house because we could, you know, um, come back, dry off, uh, you know, spend a fair bit of time doing post-processing. Um, and that meant that, um, y you know, we had somewhere comfortable that we could actually work in. Yeah. Uh, and because we were very close to a lot of the locations, uh, we were able to nip out when the weather improved, get some shots and come back and yeah. check them through. So so you said there were a few uh, logistical problems with the amount of water coming down. Uh, yes. I think places like ferry pools, you said, was inaccessible yeah, maybe? ferry pools, we couldn't. Uh, we, we arrived at the car park and the car park attendant said, um, you know, I just to be just to warn you that the stepping stones are completely flooded over with probably about, you know, uh, a foot, foot and a half of water above wow. the stepping stones. Yeah. And there is quite a gap between them as well, isn't there? Yeah, there is. You know, and if it's a torrential river, yeah. uh, we decided. Get there. And also some of the better shots at the ferry pools, uh, you actually stand in the water, you know, to get a nice view up the river. Um, and, you know, you wouldn't have been able to get yeah. anywhere near it. It was most, just torrential. Most river waterfall shots tend to work with limited amounts of water. They do, they, yeah. They, they reveal the rock yeah, and structure yeah. of it all. It's, all a, it's kind of a balance, really. I mean, when we came up, we stopped off at the Buckle in Glencoe, and there was practically hardly any water in it at all. Yeah. So, you know, where you got the front rock with the water coming across yep. it, there, there wasn't any of that there. So uh, it changes. I mean, the, the area around here, I'm sure sky is the same, drains really quickly. So as soon yeah. as you get big rain, it comes off the hill quickly. That's right. Straight and into the sea. Straight into the sea. And then hopefully <laughs> when it all stops, if it all stops, because it's still raining here, it, it's, uh, it yeah. lowers quite quickly. Yeah. So, so your three clients, what, what we're going to look at today is some of your pictures and some of your clients' pictures that yeah. you took at the time. So who, who would you like to look at first? We've got Eileen, Ken and Maureen uh, in the library here. So, okay, so we'll look at Ken's, look at Ken's if you want, because I brought Ken up with me. So um... Right, and we'll just put, put these on full screen Yeah. Um, and you can chat somewhere about them. Obviously not Sky yet. No, here. so we stopped off to have a break at uh, Elan Donan Castle. Yes. Um, and uh, quite nice conditions, actually. It, this, this was approaching probably about three o'clock in the afternoon. So it was starting to get a little bit uh, more dusky kind of feel to it. Uh, nice uh, cloud cover. Uh, and uh, the seaweed in the foreground is, uh, provides a really nice, um, interesting foreground, beautiful colours. So in post-processing, we, we did kind of, you know, work on the foreground a little bit, saturate the colour slightly, bring out the levels. Um, we also worked on the sky just to give it a little bit more definition. Mm. Now, now you, you're a teacher in a college as well, at photography, are you not? Uh, yeah, I, I have taught photography. Yeah, I'm right. actually teaching religious studies at the moment. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you could say there's some religious beliefs in, in photography as well. Oh, absolutely, but... yeah. yeah. But yeah, so so what was the premise of the, of the workshop? Was it mostly to do with uh, getting out in the field and taking pictures or post-processing or, or style or whatever? Yeah, um, uh, I, I try to tailor them for the for what the workshop clients want. Yeah. Um, and some just want to be taken to locations. They, uh, you know, at the right time, et yeah. cetera, with the tides right, et cetera. Be a tour guide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and uh, p particularly, I get quite a few female clients and they wouldn't be comfortable about, some of them wouldn't be comfortable about going out for dawn shoots on their own yeah. in, you know, wild open locations and yeah. things. So they, they do like to work in kind of a group 
environment really. Um, so, you know, some clients go because they want the camaraderie and they want to, to work together as a group. Uh, some want to just be taken to locations and then when they get there, you know, they, they're they yeah. competent about what they're doing. Um, uh, some people want, uh, obviously, help with the technical aspects, you know, filters, lenses, composition, uh, th the photographic vision. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, you know, taking the shot is only a small part of it, isn't it? You know, it's it's the, yeah. the realizing the vision in the post processing. That's so, so. What did you want? What were you talking to Ken about? It was a very lovely picture. And not yeah, uh, that it has had a sky dropped in. Oh, it's had a sky yeah. dropped in. Oh, that's yeah. all right. Is yes, that legal? But the, but the, uh, everything goes. <laughs> um, uh, it was a very flat sky from that angle, actually. Uh, I mean, it was taken at a very similar time to the previous shot, which is a bit further over to the left. Yeah. But, um, I like the angle from here with the, with the bridge, which you yeah, don't see very often. Yeah, so it, it was quite a flat white sky um, when Ken took that shot. So, you know, we worked on a little bit. We thought, well, you know, it's kind of, it's missing something really. Um, so I showed them in Photoshop how to, you know... Do selections and things. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So yeah. we, we did a kind of magnetic lasso selection of yeah. the sky. Uh, expanded the selection by a couple of pixels so that it did actually feather, the edge of it feather like and come into the castle yeah. and the uh, bridge. And it looks pretty good from all the castle and everything. And, and yeah, yeah. It was... Had me for a second. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't put it on Facebook because I thought uh, yeah. you know, somebody's going to say, is that, is that no, the real no. sky? Well, seeing the weather we've had, I wouldn't surprise. Uh, so that yeah. sky came from um, uh, a long exposure shoot at Crosby, actually. Um, uh, so it's quite windy when that was shot. So it's kind of you know blowing the clouds yep. towards us. Yeah. Uh, but Which yeah. is probably a prevailing wind direction as well. So it's... of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're up, we're up in Talisker. Yes. Um, yeah. Um... Well, this was the first evening we got there, and uh, I like to, if we've got time, go out on the first evening really, just so that uh, you know we we we, um, we can get stuck straight into yeah. it. Yeah. And, we'll get warmed up. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, but as it transpired, we, we you know we got there, and uh, I mean it was really bad weather, you know. So it started actually right. chucking it down. So we didn't really get much opportunity, and the light wasn't very good. It was very very heavy cloud, you know. Yeah. So this would have been about uh, six o'clock. I would have thought in the evening. Yeah. So sunsets over on the right hand side of yeah. there would be a sunset over on the right hand side. <laughs> the, the slight glow. Yeah, that, yeah. I don't think there was even a slight well, glow. No, there was just kind of heavy rain coming in. But that's what works with the with the beach and the water there. You get yeah. The soft light. So we, uh, we we decided to go for a mono conversion. It was very monochromatic anyway. Of course, it's black sands, isn't yes. it? It's on Talisker Beach. Um, so we thought uh, you know a mono conversion would work better for that kind of shot. Um, the tide was uh, going out, which is quite good at Talisker because it does reveal the black sand and the yeah. rocks in the foreground. Um, and we did return to Talisker later on in the week. So we, we did get a, a bit more of a, of a successful shoot, although the tide was higher in, because of course you know the tide. Yeah, moves uh, around every day. Uh, yeah, every hour. Yeah. Uh, uh, moving across to the other end of Sky. Oh. Yeah, so this is up at the Trottenish Ridge, of course, on the Kerrang. Um, it's quite a busy place, I believe, these days. Yeah, yeah. We would have done a dawn shoot, but every morning it was absolutely torrential rain. Right. So um, yeah. this was actually four o'clock in the afternoon. When you can't tell the difference between the morning and afternoon shots, you might yeah. just choose it better. Choose That's it right, yeah, because this isn't normally a location that you'd probably shoot in the afternoon, is it? Because the sun's kind of gone over the sun on the right hand side. Yeah, so, uh, but, you know, uh, most of the afternoons kind of cleared up a little bit for a couple of hours. So yeah. we took the opportunity to go out and, um, uh, you know, go up onto the ridge. I remember seeing a photograph of this from a, a Chinese photographer who had a picture of her standing on, on the on the trunk of the tree, hiding under the leaves. You're joking. No. <laughs> it's a precipitous drop below it's a there. Drop. <laughs> and it's only a tiny little tree. It so is, I, isn't I, it? Yeah. I think she might have been uh, cloned into place. Oh, right. Perhaps. Okay, yeah. So 
uh, moving on. I don't know where this would be. So. Okay, well, this was directly opposite the house we were staying in. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is uh, on the road into Carbost. Yeah. Um, it's adjacent to a small little graveyard cemetery, just to the left of it. Quite a moody location, then. Eh? Yeah. So there's uh, a little lane that takes you down to the cemetery car park, and you go over a couple of gates, and you come to the uh, uh, shores of the lock. It's a tidal lock. So um, sometimes that boat is covered in water, yeah. so you have to choose your time as it starts to become revealed. And then at low tide, of course, it's completely beached. Yeah. Uh, so we chose deliberately. That was, that was nice, a nice, nice curve of the, of the hull of the boat going into the water at yeah. the top and bottom there. Yeah. yeah, and there's some great texture in it as well. Yeah, really um, nice. there, there are a couple of other shots that, um, well, I was suggesting to the clients because the natural orientation was a landscape orientation for this because of the, the width of the boat etc yeah. um, but uh, Maureen I suggest to Maureen that she try kind of a portrait um, orientation for it because there was some really nice uh, ropes coming in at the bottom yeah uh, with this gorgeous yellowy seaweed kelpy stuff coming yeah. out of there yeah, yeah. Uh, and that worked really well and of course it was quite a good sky as well so we were able to use Use some of the sky. Is that looking over to the Cullin? Is it looking south up? Is it? Um, uh, well, that's looking uh, north. Ah, okay. I thought, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and there's a couple of other boats there as well. Yeah. That, uh, Slightly better condition. Yeah, we did do a little bit of kind of detail shots, uh, you know, focusing in on some of the paintwork that was peeling off. Is and... that a drop in sky, or did you really have blue sky at some point? Uh, the... <laughs> Like I say, the afternoons, uh, occasionally you got kind of five minutes of blue sky before the other fronts came in. It is it is one of the one of the benefits of Scotland in a way. I mean, it's very rare that you get it coming in non-stop yeah. grey blank skies. That's right. And occasionally you will see a bit of blue. Yeah. It doesn't happen like this very often, so no. at least you get a little bit of light. Yeah, yeah. And it was uh, it, yeah, it was changeable in the afternoons, but a bit predictable in the morning. And normally this time of year, you'd be seeing some autumn colour as well in, in, the, in the trees. But did you see anything when you were out there? Because it's been very late this year. Uh, not particularly, no. And there's not that many trees on Sky anyway. No, they're not <laughs> there's there's there. no. Uh, We saw a bit coming up. Uh, on the drive and we did notice that it was more coming back actually a week later there was more colours so it's changing uh, in some of the silver birches uh, so this is back to Talisker yeah looking like a fairly windy day from that waterfall in the back there. yes it was so this was a, a few days later uh, and you, so it's a afternoon shot probably um, yes yeah, before we went down to the pub so it's probably about six o'clock yeah six o'clock in the evening and uh, the tide's a lot higher. Um, it it would have been better if you know the tide would have been a bit further out, but obviously later on in the week the tide times changed. Uh, very very windy and uh, very stormy weather. You know the waves. Uh, obviously that's a longish exposure. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we've got a blur in the clouds and smoothness in the water. Uh, but it was you know. A, quite a chaotic environment and in fact the waterfall there a lot of it is actually being blown back it looks so like it's going back up yeah it's bit. not kind of re a lot of it didn't reach the yeah. the, the um the water the the sea it got blown back up over the top of it because the it was gale force winds there is this still ken if we're on yes it is yeah uh we might recognize that place <laughs> <laughs> the, the JCB, the Joe Cornish Boulder. You'll hate, yeah. me, you'll hate me that I've said that, but yes, it's. Uh, I mean, it's a cracking location. Elgol is a is a wonderful spot. Elgol is just magnificent. Yeah, some, and... some of the best geology I think I've seen. Yeah, around all all volcanic um, little bits of what do you call it? The uh, stuff that you scrub your feet with. Oh, pumice. Uh, pumice. Yeah, yeah pumice yeah. everywhere. That's right. Um, so. Uh, we headed to El Gol. We arrived about um, twelve o'clock lunchtime. Um, again, because you know the weather tended to improve in the afternoon. Yeah. Uh, although it was up, it was tipping it down when we got there, uh, which was a little bit disappointing because as you go over the rise and drop down into the village, you get this wonderful view of the Coolins, yeah. uh, yeah. defined. Uh, you know, but we didn't really see very no. much of those when we first but, arrived. But you have a very moody view of the Coolins. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we were very lucky. For about three hours, we got this break, 
Um, you know, it was windy. There was very, uh, you know, big cloud cover. Uh, the swell was very, very strong. But uh, luckily, the rain stop stopped. Um, so we, we, you know, we had a dry spell to actually set up and compose yeah. and get our shots. Nice tide level and uh, waves coming in as well to define things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would have liked to have waited a little bit. It started raining really heavily, so uh, there was another metre of tide to come up, oh, which, okay, yeah. which, which could have meant around it. that we would have got some water around the boulder, but it was absolutely tipping it down. Yeah. So we thought it was uh, wise to, to leave there. But Ken's done a really nice job uh, yeah. with that. Um, so should we look at uh, Maureen? Yeah. Next. Maureen's got four pictures here from uh, now I can see there the vertical composition. Working That's right. Well yeah. With this, yeah. Yeah. And uh, there, there is another shot uh, further on, which is the colour shot. I think it's on there anyway. Yeah. Got a quick look and check. Yeah. Yes, there is another one. Is there? there we go. Not not in that section, but it must be Elaine's if there's a colour one. Oh, okay. Right. Well, either that or she doesn't. Yeah. Right. But I, I like that um, vertical orientation because there's some wonderful le leading lines with the ropes going in, like you said. Yeah, um, and the movement at the front of the boat there, with the winds carrying around it. Yeah, it's a great, uh, great little location, and um, uh, yeah, there's really nice, interesting elements to the image as well. You know, with the foreground, mid middle distance, and good cloud cover as well. Now, out of interest, how how did you or did she did the black and white conversion, or did you help her look at it? Because I'm always interested how people do, how people convert their files to black. And white. Uh, I I think I demonstrated using Silver FX. Okay, yeah. So yeah. I, I th I'm pretty sure that Maureen then would have done a Silver FX conversion on yeah, it. Yeah, it's a cracking piece of software. Uh, yeah, we tend to use the, well, we use very, we, we do use some of the starts from a preset maybe. Yeah. Uh, so we sometimes use a high structure harsh. And uh, we, we always kind of dial it back quite you a bit. You just get an idea how it's going to work Yeah, because it, it yeah. does seem to kind of over-process a little bit, doesn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely, yeah. You get these horrible halos appearing around yeah. high contrast areas. But I, I think that's the same with most presets, is, is you, you just use them as a way to see what it might look like before that's right. it's a starting point, yeah, like yeah. anything else. And then when, when it's uh, we've done the conversion, it's been brought into Photoshop, what I like to do then, I, I don't, I'm not keen on kind of global adjustments. Mm. So what I like to do is work with the lasso tool yep. and with a big feather, maybe a two or three hundred pixel feather, and make selections. So I would, I would, we, we'd probably have made a selection of the foreground yep. and uh, done some levels adjustments and some Bring dodging and burning yeah. and things like that. And then we would have, um, I, I tend to split the image into sections, so then we would have done some work in the boat. Yeah, I'm going to take a quick look at the, the boat there, see if yeah. I can zoom in. My zoom might be a bit out here, so let's just do that. And put it on. Well, one problem with retina screens is you can't zoom in. Yeah, just looking at the textures around the boat, which I was quite, quite liked how the how the water's moving there. Yeah, um, I think in the color shot we did do a little bit more work in bringing out a bit more detail inside the boat. Yeah, yeah. Um, just in those darker areas. But that works very well. Uh, so yeah, I like to work on kind of sections of the image. So I'd work on the foreground, and then the middle distance again using a big feathered lasso, yeah. and do my levels and uh, a bit of dodge and burning. Then I would probably work on this um, section of the hills in the distance, yes. yeah. and then probably a couple of sections in the sky, just trying to bring out as much detail as you I can. I do. I do like in this that the vignette isn't across the whole picture so there is a there's a darkening on the top left left yeah. edge bottom left so yeah. so the is a focal point is offset slightly to the right and yeah. it works quite nicely with the boat direction and things yeah like i i yeah, I mean, lens manufacturers, when when you apply a calibration, take off the vignette, don't they? Yes, it's a bad thing. Yeah, don't you know. want vignetting on it. So what? I, but I, I do quite like a vignette after I've finished post processing. I like to add a, a bit of a vignette yeah. just to kind of uh, it kind of holds you into this photograph, doesn't and, it? And it's often good to have a bit of control over it, so you can choose yeah. how how yeah. things are darkening, etc. Um, and I put a white border on, and some people don't like that, but yeah, uh, I'm, I don't I'm, know. I kind of I think it. Looks looks all right with the right pictures yeah um yeah. and especially when it's on a on you don't know what background it's going to go on to because you don't know if somebody's going to view a picture on a white or a black background yeah Maybe you will process right. slightly differently but when i when i print my photographs I tend to have quite a big white border uh mm. that the image sits in yeah. and uh, i just feel as though it gives the image a bit more space to breathe really you yeah. know i don't like it constrained to the edge of the frame it's got to have space 
And often when clients are composing shots, uh, the, the tendency is that they kind of zoom in and fill the frame with the subject. And I keep telling them, you know, give it a bit of space. It's got yeah. to have space to breathe. Yeah. And you, you can always crop in a little bit in post-processing, but um, it, it's almost you're not doing the subject justice by zooming right in. You've got, you've got to see some of the extraneous stuff and it's got to yeah, it's context, got, isn't it? yeah where it sits within the landscape yeah so um that, that's quite important so we're at the far west side of sky yes uh, so nice point lighthouse yeah um so i can't remember what we do we shoot there uh so of course it's good for a sunset yeah so we headed there probably about um, I don't know half four in the afternoon to you know explore the area and get set up um, luckily the the weather stayed reasonable it was very windy again yeah um, but uh, no rain so that was good but unfortunately I mean it looked re as though we were going to get a really good sunset because the sun was dipping over to the right uh, in a clear band of sky but but then of course you know just above the horizon that tiny row tiny blocking cloud yes yeah. that's right yeah. so that appeared and the sun dropped behind it um but um but that's a nice moody moody sky yeah it is yeah yeah, yeah. we did a little bit of work on um just bringing out a bit more detail in the sky but it's created a lovely soft horizon there hasn't it with mm. that uh, nice soft light in the distance um and we didn't really uh, move to many different locations when we were shooting that. It's, it's a funny location in that way because it does have some um, good angles. Yeah. You know, and you trying to, if you're trying to integrate anything in the foreground, if you lose the foreground, it just looks a bit weird. So you yeah. need something to leave. That's right, through. yeah. And there's only a few places when you can really do that. Yeah. So I have shot it where we, we were where we were sat and yeah. we actually did sit so we were a bit protected from the wind that's so it's in a little kind of crevice really always so. good when you can find a place that's yeah. uh, from the weather that's right um oh, this is the second talisca day i take it then yes that's yeah. right so that that was the same day where we saw that shot on the right hand side Ooh. of the waterfall so M moody bit of last light it looks like yes yeah so uh, again very windy and stormy and uh, this was a probably about two two three seconds i would have thought exposure yeah judging by the fact that we've still got texture in the water um but of course you know that betrays the fact that uh, there were big rollers crashing into the rocks yes. and spray everywhere so it's kind of smoothed a bit of it down a bit um it's always when you look at these pictures you look at them and think well wow, it's quite moody it's like a, a nice serene not serene but it's got this quiet feeling to it when you're actually there and it's actually really uh, loud and yeah that's right vigorous i do violent. quite a lot of um uh kind of long exposure coastal work you yeah. know at crosby and places like that and um i think what the thing i love about long exposure photography is you stood there in a quite a chaotic noisy environment yeah. and you take a shot over 50 seconds or a minute and you end up with something really kind of ethereal yeah. and contemplative yeah. and uh, you, you know totally, totally different yeah. from what you can see in front of you but you know there's no real trickery uh, you're still photographing the scene but just over an extended period of yeah. time and over yeah. that extended period of time you end up with something totally different yeah there's a wonderful series of photographs by Hiroshi Sugimoto who went to cinemas and he would photograph a movie mm. but it'd leave the shutter open for the whole length of the movie so you get this uh, audience in, <laughs> in, right, in the yes. cinema and they're just basically a white screen with a huge amount of glow coming out Yeah. but it was uh, it's fa fascinating to watch you can see everybody sitting there and the audience changing but yeah <laughs> the transform completely transformative Yeah. so this is the last picture of uh, are we on Eileen's? I can't remember uh, Maureen's Maureen's yes. well, yeah uh, and that's a nice, a nice uh, original angle of of the uh, the cooling with yeah going in the foreground. It's a very low profile. Yes. Well, we um, du during the kind of post processing, um, the, we did feel as though there was a, a, a bit of kind of a dead space really in the image. Mm. So we thought, you know, a letterbox crop uh, w suits the image a lot better, really. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's it's worked quite well on that. And nice with the sort of ghostly layers of um, water coming in. Yeah. Uh, and it's always nice when you see the water rippling back off the rocks over to the. That's right. Over to the right here. 
so that that would have been a little stopper shot, yeah. a six stop filter, with uh, I think she used a 0.6 soft grad on there actually, yeah. just to bring down the cloud. Um, uh, probably exposure time, I think it was about four or five seconds, four seconds maybe for that. Yeah. So how did your clients find the difficult weather? Were they quite positive about it? Really? Uh, were they positive about it? They were a great group. Oh, that's good. <laughs> they were really great. Um, and uh, I think they appreciated that, you know, it's, it's often the weather that makes the photograph, isn't it? Yeah. And I'd kind of pre-armed them and said, the best photographs I've taken have been in the worst of weather. Yes. So I, I was kind of, uh, you know... Well, you'll get something different because a lot of people won't go out in these conditions. Yeah, And therefore right. they won't see yeah. what you've got there. Yeah. So who are we on? We're on Elaine's next, is it? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Oh, here we go. It's an example oh, of right. what the conditions looked like. Yeah, that's right. The workshop leader um, yeah. doing his job with the brollies. Brollies. How many brollies can we count on? Uh, it's picture uh, at three there. Yeah, 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 that's right. I used to go out with a with a, uh, a tripod attachment on my brolly and a second tripod sometimes. Yeah, so, well, we discussed that about whether anybody had made a brolly that would be fixed to a yeah. tripod. Yeah. But we it. wondered then in wind whether it would blow the you, whole thing over. You don't want it attached to your tripod. Right. You have to have a second tripod for it. Right. But if you do that, and it's not too windy, it does yeah. work. Oh, so, right. I'll have to have, I've got a spare tripod. I might give it uh, a go. And there's a wider view of um, the uh, Trottenish. Is it the Karung area? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we went in the little gully. Again, it was a bit more sheltered in there. Um, and there's no traffic on those bends. That's, no, and we we did have a bit of a discussion about the roads. Yeah. Uh, Elaine, which whose photo it is, yes. really liked the the road kind of snaking up there. Yeah, um, I, I'm going to say it doesn't bother me. I think. It's, yeah, I, it doesn't bother me either. Uh, I mean, I've never taken it out of a shot when I've been shooting. Yeah, there. Um, it is what it is, and it sort of shows shows a bit of context in a way, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I know one of the things I, I when I went there for the first time was fighting with the background the the bush covers up the little lakes yeah so no um but there's, you no, could, there's no good solution to it really that's apart it. from shooting very very low yeah you'd have yeah. to be actually almost lying down i think yeah. really to get the um to get the bush you know against the uh, sky um but uh it's a I, cracking location yeah oh it is i mean it's uh, it's a magical spot and there we've oh, got there one. We go. Yeah, with a proper road in. <laughs> I quite like that. That's that's a nice. Yeah, I think it works it, well. It shows it shows the three dimensionality of the landscape there. Yeah, yeah. there's, I, and I think uh, that the fact that it's a bit hazy in the distance does does really give depth to the image, yeah. doesn't it? Right yeah. from the foreground, right the way through. Um, yeah, it's just a shame, you know, we couldn't have got a dawn shoot there because, of course, on the on a dawn shoot, all these. Um, east facing slopes get, get lit, on them, yes. don't they? Yeah. Uh, and it looks, yeah, that really does come to life then. It is Scotland, that's the reason people keep coming back, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Now, I, I really like that, that's got a wonderful high contrast feel to it. The yeah. Glow, the glow of the reflection on the water is really nice. Yeah, I mean, it, we may have been able to bring out a bit more detail in the boat. It, um, it's a little bit blocked up, but. Yeah. Um, I don't think it needs a huge amount. Is, it, is there anything there? We can have a quick look now and see what there's. It's a little bit in there, isn't there? Mm. I don't think it needs needs much though, because I quite like the high contrast yeah. feel of the, of yeah. the, of the book. Of the there's book nice there. light around it, isn't there? It's yeah, kind exactly. Of, uh, it looks almost like kind of moonlight, really. It's just kind of this soft light on the foreground. So I'm not sure I know where this is. Okay, so this is uh, the from the main road from Dunvegan down towards Sligacan. Yeah. And um, it's about, probably about half a mile from the hotel uh, on the right hand side. There's a little lay by where you can park up, and there's this uh, rough track that leads to this um, white cottage, which Fantastic. has Blowing. been illuminated, yeah. uh, not by Photoshop. It's a real one. It's real. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. So we had these uh, crepuscular rays coming down, and we waited. And again, it was windy, so the wind was blowing the clouds across, and then we yeah. just got this small break. I, th I think when, when people say for landscape photography is a, a relaxed and, and um, sort of like low-key uh, hobby, when you get light changing like this, 
it's really really intensive it's like oh, sports it, photography it can be frantic can't yeah. you yeah you know getting all your kit ready and yeah. everything like yeah. that and you've got to keep it all of a sudden the light changes and you've got to that's right find a picture somewhere and that you know it's exciting you know yeah. that dynamic yeah. environment isn't it um you know where you where you've really got to uh be focused on what you're working on yeah yeah uh, so this is a yeah i think uh elaine's done really well with this composition you know with path going off into the distance yeah. and then of course uh, uh, that great sky and I think it's almost illuminated the cottage it's probably slightly before it isn't it yeah that yeah. that beam of light but we well, uh, don't want it right on in that case because it's uh, it, it sort of balances it doesn't it yeah it makes it sit against the dark background as well yeah. in the same way and uh, it would have worked in color as well because the, 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 the bracken was quite a nice color you know brown mm. fawny color so um, uh, but I think uh, we decided to go mono, um, principally because, the, you know, the, there's not that many elements to the shots mm. either. And it's about structure and light, yeah, isn't it? So. Yeah, and of course we're bringing out a lot of kind of texture as well, aren't we, in the in the road and the uh, foreground detail. Yes, <coughs> yeah. And we were mentioning earlier about um, uh, tour leaders taking their own pictures whilst on on tours and it's uh it's it's an it's an interesting conversation and we we agreed that you don't want to be running off taking your own pictures no but i think most clients like to see you taking your own pictures. they do well. and i think clients would be uh a bit perturbed if you, or you just kind of turned up and uh you know they they were taking the shots and you 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 weren't showing any sort of photographic endeavor for yourself yeah. kind of thing maybe we'll see a bit of enthusiasm from there that's the right yeah and well, also you know when we do the post processing afterwards they like to see you know yeah. uh, what what your take on it and uh, and on that topic i think we've got some oh we've got a couple more from um elaine elaine here yeah so we've got the that fantastic sky from um that's right back to next point, point. Uh, there is a slight bit of halo, isn't there, just around the right yeah, hand side of the... Yeah, a little um, bit too much shadow recovery yeah, possibly on, yeah. on there. Or but it might have been a, a pre it, preset. Oh, is it a silver effects thing possibly? Yeah, could yeah. have been a bit overcooked. But the, but the sky is gorgeous, I've got to say that's that's fab. It is, um, yeah. And a classic diagonal composition from there, from, from the east. Yeah, we were huddled behind some rocks to um, try and get out the wind. And then there's the... Uh, that stormy day that's you can right see, you can see that the cooling disappeared now and again <laughs> it did yeah. is these the big waves um breaking around yeah the, yeah it oh, is got yeah. all these little ghost waves you can see that's right yeah but uh yeah similar shot to well i think uh, obviously maureen and elaine were standing next to each other there but uh, working in the same areas yeah yeah. So if we go back to the uh, library for a second, uh, talking about taking some of uh, your own pictures here, we'll, we'll talk through a couple of the pictures. Okay, you so... So about in colour. Yes. Nice to see yes. blue sky up there. Yeah, so there was... Uh, we didn't... Uh, so, okay. This is another composite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let me explain what happened with this one. Um, so uh, obviously sunset over on the right hand side was starting to illuminate the uh, side cliffs yes. and the rocks in the foreground which was really really nice so that was from that shot uh, but there wasn't much color in the sky yeah when the rock when the cliffs were illuminated so as the uh, sun dropped it dropped behind a bank of clouds which stopped any illumination on the side of the cliffs yes but it did actually start to illuminate Light, the, sky. the sky yeah, yeah. yeah. so that the sky was taken from a shot probably about 20 minutes later yeah. than the shot of the foreground but it's uh, contextually the same so it's from the same position same, same position yeah area. just maybe about 20 minutes difference because yeah. um, we we lost the light on the side of the rocks quite quite yeah. quickly actually well this this just proves it's a it's there's no such thing as a hard line between right or wrong or anything because that's in that many ways like a lot long exposure isn't it yeah, yeah. <laughs> just it's long exposure <laughs> two different moments that's right yeah. um, so I like I like the way it's worked I like the way the um, you got the illumination here, which is contextually similar to the cliff side yeah. illumination as well. Yeah. Um, so, so no no stop or anything like that. So no. it was 
you know, fastest shutter speed, really. It's maintained some of the uh, detail yeah. in the, in the water. I say a very soft horizon as well, which is... It was, it yeah. This is where the, the, the uh, sun disappeared into. Yeah, I mean, it was probably another front making its way in, really, yeah, yeah because, it, 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 you know, it started tipping down later on as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, back to Talisker Bay on the, uh, the second shoot we did there. Yeah, um, the windy day. Yeah, and I... I decided to choose uh maybe a second shutter speed for this yeah so uh Keep big heavy yeah water. big heavy wave crashes but um the second exposure has smoothed out a little bit but still maintained some of the texture in the foreground which yeah. uh, i did bring out a little bit more in post processing so using something like clarity or something like that to bring some texture out or uh, no it was a little bit of contrast yeah. so i'd make feathered selections of uh, certain areas in here okay. in the foreground water and then just boost the contrast a little bit and maybe just a touch of dodging and burning as well to bring out a bit more of the texture there uh, i say the culling with a blast of uh, clouds coming towards us. Yeah, yeah. Well, or away. I'm not sure. What's uh, coming towards, be, uh, towards us towards because us, it yeah. was. Uh, yeah, north, that's right. Northwesterly. Yeah, so the wind was blowing towards us and um, a lot of spray. So you had to keep your filters. Yeah. Keep cleaning them because they get covered very, very easily. Out of interest, have you? Do you ever use a sacrificial filter? They are for people <laughs> using. They put they put a glass on one of their, one of their sort of like old filters. That's oh right, yeah, okay. Put it over the front. Yeah, and then just remove it for the photograph now and again. So. No, uh, I haven't done that. Just but... go, just wiping them on a regular basis. Yeah, I, I, I've got some um, sprays. It's called Stanger spray. Oh, okay. Across that. No, I'm not. Either. And that's actually better than the the. Yeah. spray yeah. so you just spray it on and it it does clean off the ah. salts oh very, fantastic because it is just the well. salt that makes the, the problem isn't oh, it oh it is yeah it's a nightmare trying to get it off especially the wind's blowing towards you like yeah. that yeah um so compositionally wise um i don't like kind of if i can avoid it i don't like kind of cutting rocks off yes. halfway you know across the scene really so I know it's very, very small little gap that I've got on the left-hand side there. Yeah. Uh, but I did, you know, I, I didn't want to lose part of that uh, torpedo-shaped rock on the left-hand yeah. side. And so. the same with a boulder-shaped rock on the right-hand side. They're just yeah. pinning down the bottom left yeah. and the bottom right yeah. side um, of the picture. And, uh, again, not to particularly long exposure, although there is a lot of blur in the clouds, isn't there? Um, probably only a couple of seconds at the most. Yeah, right? judging by the texture in the water. Yeah. Um, and now, it, was this, would this be a silver effects? It would have been started off as a silver uh, effects, okay, yeah, yeah. and then um, played around. In I the would Photoshop. have done some levels adjustments and a little bit of dodging and burning. I did some dodging and burning on the right hand side of the the, the rocks, just above that curved rock on the right yeah. hand side, just to bring out more uh, texture in it. Yeah. Um, and then I added a vignette to the image, particularly nice. to the sky. The sky works really well, though. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it, you know, it, it was moody. It was yeah. a very, um, you know, it was windy, big swell. Um, and I think the vignette kind of, you know, yeah. really emphasises that kind of mood in the image, doesn't it? Definitely. Um, so this, that was a very similar location, wasn't it? There, yeah. yeah. So this is longer shutter speed, of course. I like the colour you've got in the water there. You've got that uh, slightly greeny, yeah. turquoisey colour coming out. Yeah. So this was with a little stopper. Yeah. Uh, I would imagine it was probably... I think I put my aperture up to about F16. Yeah. Um, so it looks 10 seconds old. Yeah, I think it was probably about 10 seconds. You can just see some blasts of wave coming up. I think that there. might be the rain coming across, oh, is that actually. the rain? Yeah, like, wow, in the... Um, heavy rain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, over towards the mountain. Um, oh, right. That's... Ah, then, is this, uh, so that's the sort of rawish picture coming out. Yes, it the is. Process. Yeah, yeah. So we've got the uh, the cool effect coming in. I think I might have added a little bit of a photo filter on that, a, a blue cooling filter. Yeah. Um... I had a cooling filter for the cooling mountain. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help that. <laughs> Just smelled slightly differently. Yeah. <laughs> So no, I like it. I like the way the the water's flowing off that central central rock here. Yeah, there's some lovely movement around it. Yeah, 
And we've still got a little bit of green in the uh, yes. water in the distance there, haven't we? Which is quite nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah it does look like rain actually here, doesn't it? Is, it is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I, I, yeah, I, I do like um, uh, a portrait of the landscape almost. So I do shoot quite a lot of it in portrait. Yeah. Um, and particularly if you've got a good sky, you know, it, uh, it can be a big part of the image, can't yeah. it? And it forces you to compose, I think, sometimes portrait orientation. It forces mm. you to try and find a way of guiding the eye from yeah. the foreground. Yeah, because some people, of course, shoot in, you know, 4-3 format and things like that, don't they? Mm. And restrict themselves to, yep. to, you know, or a square format, of course, square crop. Um, so this is a wider shot, and I, I probably trimmed a bit off the sky there to give it a little bit more of a letterbox, longer and thinner shot. Um, it's nice with the colour in there, with the greeny, greeny yeah, colours of the water. Yeah, and we've got some waves crashing around there. Fantastic. So do you, do you think it was quite a success from your point of view, considering well, the weather? Yeah, the clients went away happy, which yeah. is always good. Um, and, you know, they... They found the Photoshop instruction very useful mm. um, and, you know, seeing the raw file through to the finished image and, you know, everything you can do with it. One, so, of, one of the nice things about this time of year is you do get a little bit more time in the evenings to yeah, uh, that's right. do some uh, sharing of pictures at the end or processing. Yeah, with, with the shop. obligatory bottles of wine. With a, with a few bottles <laughs> of wine, maybe a bottle of Talisca. <laughs> Yeah, well, we did actually go to Target. I bought my dad a bottle of it to uh, take down yeah. when I go and see him again. Fantastic. So. But well, we didn't get uh, we didn't get a taste in though. Oh, did they to, not yeah, do it? Like you? No, you have to pay for it. Oh, blimey! Right. Whereas last time I went with some Canadian clients, uh, the guy came out and said, "All oh, right, yeah, you know, try this one. Yeah. And what do you think of this one?" And but no, they didn't do it then. Well, they know what they've got. They've got a. Uh, a... A captive audience on Sky now, haven't they? Yeah, well, it was so. very busy and, you know, coach loads of people coming. So I suppose if they're doling out, they'll they're going to get a few bottles, won't yeah. they? <laughs> well, thank you very much for popping in. Really appreciate That's it. That's great. Guys. Yeah. And, and I hope you say hello next time because I believe you have a Glencoe tour in November. Yes, that's right. And I'm coming back up to Scotland in about three weeks to, to do, it's not a workshop, it's kind of a reconnoiter really. Yeah. So we're going up to Loch Marie and uh, all the pool and um, Wonderful Apple Cross area. and so we're spending a week up there. Wonderful. Well, I hope you enjoy it and uh, I'll speak to you later. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you.